Hello everyone, welcome back to Bartowski Plays Minecraft. So last episode I showed off this little area. Now there have been a few changes. Um, I'm going to have to move this farm back soon enough so that it matches up with this one. I ended up needing a little more space for what I have in mind. So I'm going to eventually have these slabs going all the way around and I'll continue this out that way. But today I promised that we would do some enchanting. So to do so, you will need at least um, two diamonds, a book, which I'll show you how to craft in a bit, and some obsidian, and I'll show you how to collect that in a bit as well. So a few changes, just moved all the stuff from the other place over here. Um, I put in a bed over here, and to make a bed, all you have to do is take some wood planks, put some wool on the top, and you can get a bed. Doesn't matter what type of um, wood you use. So to make obsidian, you're going to need some lava and some water. So as you can see, I have some here on my hot bar. So I'm just gonna wander over here a bit and get out of the way and put down my lava. And as you see, when the water meets the lava, it turns into obsidian. Now, obsidian can only be mined with a diamond pickaxe, and it takes a while, but if you use your diamond pickaxe, you'll get it. Any other thing you use to break it, it'll just break, but you won't be able to actually collect the obsidian from the block that you've broken. So now that you have, you know how to get obsidian, you'll need um, four obsidian. So let's get four, and two diamonds, almost out of those, and a book. Now for a book, you're going to need at least three sugar cane and one leather. So you can make the sugar cane into paper or sugar. Now we obviously want paper since we're making a book. But sugar can be used for potions and in several um, crafting ingredients, such as making cake. Or I think it's in the pumpkin pie recipe. I'm sure it is. But anyway, this yields us a book. So now we can oops, we can put down our obsidian and diamonds on each side in the book. And here we go. We get the achievement. And let's place this down. So as you see, if I put a, a weapon, and you can also put armor and tools on here to enchant, it'll give me different options here. And this number on the side, that's how many levels I need to do that enchantment. And this is telling me uh, the lapis I'll need. Oops, the wrong key there. So you'll need some lapis to enchant. But there, uh, as you notice, since it only goes to level 5, uh, you may be wondering, is that the best enchantment there is? Well, no, it, it's definitely not. The max enchant level is 30, and there are ways to power up your enchantment table. To do that, you will need bookshelves. And to do that, oops, let's grab some leather. Going to need some wood. Here's where I'm keeping it. And so here we'll make some more pages. So you'll need three books at least for a bookshelf. There we go. So three leather. There we get our books. We put them in the middle. Wood on top and bottom. We get a bookshelf. And there's an achievement for that as well. So when we place it, you never want to place it right next to it. Always have a block in between. Now, um, we'll be able to get higher levels. See, now we can get level 6, which we weren't getting before. So you'll, uh, to get the max enchant, you'll just keep adding bookshelves around your table to do so. And let's just see what we can enchant right now. So let's see. So some of the different uh, enchantments. We have protection. That's for armor. It'll prevent you from taking as much damage from attacks. Um, let's see. Projectile protection pr uh, specifically protects from, well, projectiles, so like arrows, stuff like that. 
And unbreaking makes your weapons or tools last longer. Let's see what we have here. Same stuff there. Hmm. Aha. Aqua Affinity lets you breathe underwater for a longer period of time. So that can be useful if you intend to do some underwater exploring. Sharpness makes your sword do more damage. And it's a sword specific enchantment. Efficiency makes you mine faster. And let's see, it looks like all we can do right now. Let's put this back on. I'm not really wild about any of these oops, any of these particular enchantments, so I don't think I'm going to be doing any enchanting right now. Oops. But that is how that works. So just to talk about some of the stuff that I plan to do in this area. So like I said, I'm going to continue this to go all the way around. And once that is done, we will be able to uh, start work on my next project here, which I think I will probably start doing on screen in about two episodes. I hope you don't mind. I plan to do most of this off screen because it's all just going to look like this. So doing it on screen, you all will just be watching me place a bunch of these blocks and getting more stone and stuff like that. And that's not particularly interesting or informative. But oh, we might as well do this now. Um, so where did I put that? So there's another thing we can do with our obsidian here. And I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to need to collect flints. And let me just make a shovel here really quickly. That will certainly prove helpful. Let's see, where am I keeping my sticks? I'm still getting used to this organization. Okay, and let's build a shovel. So while I'm doing this, most people are probably getting out of school right now, and that's probably a pretty nice feeling, huh? I would expect so. I know it was for me, but finals were horrible this year. So at my school, everyone has to take four, excuse me, five uh, main courses. So math, science, history, some sort of language, and an English class. And so you have a final in each one. Here we have some flint. And basically the way it works is that all of the high school gathers in one room and they put out all of the desks from all the classrooms into that room. And it, it's pretty tense, actually. And then the teachers just roam up and down the aisles in case you have questions, things like that. And you have an hour and a half to complete your tests, which sounds like a lot of time, but man, some of them were really difficult. I take uh, Latin for my language, and that was not the most pleasant experience. It was a hundred multiple choice questions and followed by, let's see, what did we have to do? After we did our multiple choice questions, we had to then, um, I'm getting distracted by what I'm doing here, translate a paragraph and then do reading comprehension on that. And then we had to do a bunch of charts about different verb endings and stuff like that. It was pretty bad. So, oops, I made it a little taller than I had to. What we have here is a nether fortress. I mean, excuse me, I'm so distracted. Nether portal. And when you walk through this, it will take us to another world called the nether. Now, to access these portals, you have to use the flint and steel to activate them. So that's why we needed the flint. And they don't have to be this tall. But you do have to have um, at least these two on the bottom. I could have made these dirt and then uh, up three or four or so and then go across with the top like I did here. But it can be a different dimension. Or you can make it wider than two if you want. So for example, if you want to ride a horse in or something like that, it might be easier to make it bigger. We will probably make a larger one eventually. But for now, let's just see what awaits. But as I was saying about school, it's it can be pretty stressful and I'm if any of you want to talk about your finals experiences, say something in the comments. I think it's kinda of interesting and 
I know we're all glad to be done, and that's worth celebrating. So here we have the nether, and this pig must have wandered through the portal. Um, so we have nether rack here, which is basically like dirt, but mined with a pickaxe. This here is nether quartz. It can give off, um, it can give off experience when you mine it, and a fair deal actually, so it's pretty good. And then when you can get, it's four, when you get four, you can get a block of quartz. And quartz can be a pretty interesting building material, and I intend to use some for our upcoming project, which is one of the main reasons I wanted to come to the nether as soon as possible. So over there, that is soul sand. You'll walk slower when you're in it, but it has some uses, as we will discuss in some upcoming episodes. Here we have a zombie pigman, that just walked under there. They are interesting. They don't attack you directly. You have to attack one of them first. But if you do, they will call all of the others to come and help, so you'll just be attacked by a horde of them. And they can do a lot of damage. So let's get some lava here. One of the nice things, though, about the nether is there's no shortage of lava. So if you ever need more lava and you're near the nether, certainly your best and easiest way to get there. But one thing to know is water doesn't work here. For example, I'll put out water. See, it just disappears. So definitely don't count on using water for anything here. Let's just explore a little bit, see what we have in this area. I don't want to go too far, because I'm not really marking a path around me or behind me. So, we have more soul sand here. Kind of a lake of, or a, a stream of lava headed down. Let's head back up here. And let's figure out a way down. It will should probably come back with better pickaxe at some point. Because we're not going to get too far with this one, given it's almost broken. But let's see. Oh, yep, there we go. Well, we we kind of scoped out the area a little bit. So that is kind of the most basic information about the nether. And we'll explore it in more depth in the coming episodes. But I think we'll leave it here. So I hope you enjoyed, and as always, thanks for watching. Bye.